What is going on guys? Aaron here with AV Astronomy. I know it's been a while, but I've had so much going on and between the bad weather and some scope change outs I've done, it's kind of put me behind here, but I'm back and I'm excited to be doing videos again for you guys. And today we're going to be talking about star color, how to get the most out of your images and getting good, saturated, accurate star color. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Alright guys, so let's get started. I've put a link in the description for this image so you guys can follow along, make this a little bit easier and hopefully a better tutorial for you. So let's get right to it. So here we have the double cluster, okay? And like always, what we're going to do is duplicate the layer and we're going to perform an initial stretch, Control M. Now I like to use, if you see my other videos, these arc sign stretches. If you don't have these, you can download them on Cloudy Nights forums. I'll put a link in the description as well. Start out with the arc sign 100. And you can already see, just from that initial stretch, the orangish yellow stars here we have. That color lightened up a good bit, and the blue is almost already completely blown out just from one single stretch. So what can you do about that? Well. What I like to do after doing an initial stretch is going to select color range and make sure this is on highlights and then you want to toggle this so that it selects all the stars, okay? But you don't want the background messed with. So let's, let's this looks pretty good, 100% on fuzziness, range 164. Let's start with that. And then we're going to select the mask button right here. And then we're going to click on this mask because we want to check it out and make sure it's, it's looking good, okay? Hold down alternate, left click. Let's zoom in a bit on that, control plus. And let's, as a general rule, I soften the mask a little bit to make the uh, adjustments that are made less harsh around the edges. So we're going to blur this with a Gaussian blur just a little bit, maybe a pixel, just to soften it a little. There we go. All right, let's zoom back out, control minus. And let's add a little color boost to these stars. So press control U. And we're just going to leave it on master so that it evenly increases the saturation, okay? And you want to be, I tend to be a little aggressive here in this initial stretch. Again, we're trying to preserve the color uh, that's already there. I mean, you could go 100, but you're, it's too much. You know, it's too much. You're going to run into colors just bleeding out over into the background, that sort of thing, just creating artifacts. It just doesn't look good. But I think a safe but good number is probably still going to be fairly aggressive up here on 70, 75. We'll go 70, okay? We're going to change this to a color layer to help reduce the noise addition from that color change. And then we're going to go down here to the background, press Control M. A lot of people like to ask why I do this. This is something that I've been doing in my workflow for a very long time. And uh, Jerry Logicus was actually the first one in his workflow that I saw do that. And it seems to work well, so that's why I do it. All right, so let's go back up here to this image and let's flatten that out. Okay, so we've restored some of that color. Let's do another stretch, Control M. We'll do an arc sign 30. You could do 100, but here we go. Look at this, let's zoom in. So 
Now we've got some color back into these stars here. I know these some of these stars are a little wonky because the collimation was a little off in this image, but um, you still get the gist of what we're trying to do here. So let's go to levels, check our levels, and let's align the channels to the left. Green, and then finally blue. Do that for each channel. You'll want to clip any data. All right, there we go. I like to flatten out my data as I progress and I'm satisfied with what I've done. If, you know, a lot of people like to just keep their layers open, and that's fine too. That way you can just discard a layer if you don't like what you did, but I I just do it a little differently. Let's duplicate that layer again. And let's do one more stretch. So, control M. Let's do another arc sine 30. That's probably about the most we're going to be able to stretch out of that. And let's go to levels. Let's bring that back a little bit. Now we can start to see the gradient. Now here's where I would use here's where I would use gradient exterminator. It's a plugin that you can download. It's worth every penny. It just makes eliminating these gradients so much easier. It's RC Astro gradient exterminator. And I typically use medium, medium. That seems to work the best So, for me. I mean, there's situations where you may want to get aggressive with it, but that's something you can kind of toy around with and see what works best for your image. But we'll do that. Let it run, and boom. It just evened out all of the gradient there. So let's flatten that out. Control-J. Let's move on to the next step. Now, as you can see, let's do, let's do a levels check here. <clears throat> Our channels are still a little bit off, but part of that is because of the green push. So let's let's pull that out. So what we're gonna do now is blur this top layer and go to average. Okay. Now you're gonna select the bottom layer, the background layer, and you're gonna go to image, apply image, and you're gonna subtract that top layer image okay you're subtracting this image that's it there merge layer one and if you turn that off there you go that takes out all that green junk light pollution some of it's from the filter yada yada and now let's look what we have. We have what looks like a pretty decent image already with the double cluster, but there's still more you can do here for your star color. And you'll see there's some here that um, we, can, we can push the blue a little bit more. So what I like to do is go back to color range. Same, use that same mask settings that worked well. And create a mask and let's check that mask again remember it's alternate left click <clears throat> soften that mask filter blur Gaussian blur one pixel and now let's go to camera all filter now when you make adjustments in camera all filter you're gonna see adjustments applied to the whole image but once you hit OK, it'll only apply to the mask that you created. All right, so let's just tinker around with some of these settings here. The biggest things we're going to want to play around with here are vibrance and saturation. You want to be careful, but at the same time, we're looking to get a decent color boost on these stars. And that's looking pretty good. Let's zoom in. That's looking pretty good there. All right, I just did a, a moderate boost on saturation and vibrance. You can play around with exposure, contrast, highlights, all that to your liking, but I'm pretty content with what I'm seeing here as far as contrast. Let's hit OK. Boom, see, and it only applied it to the stars. You can click this on and off to toggle to see the difference. So you could stop here. But if that wasn't enough for you and you wanted to really push the colors, you can certainly go further. You could do another color saturation boost. 
using the star mask like we did earlier or you could also use the camera raw filter but masking is key here because you don't want to do this to the entire image otherwise you're just going to increase background noise to the image but this looks pretty good to me here let's flatten it out and let's do another stretch just to see what happens and see if we can pull out any more detail in this image so control j control m and let's just play with the stretch bar this time just a little s curve for contrast there we go let's see how that looks compared let's toggle that on there we go it just makes it pop a little bit more that's usually what i like to do when i've done a few arc sign stretches and the image looks pretty good to me just to give it a little more contrast pop i do a little s curve stretch manually and that's exactly what it did it just popped those stars a little bit more background still looks nice and neutral and that looks pretty good to me guys i mean you could take this further um but i'm liking what i see we've got good color on the stars we've got good contrast in the background and this is really how i handle star color for um for all my RGB data, which is pretty much all I do. I really don't do a whole lot of narrowband data. I do some HA using the L Extreme to try and bring out some more HA data in some of the nebulas I image, but I really don't have that set up yet. I don't use a mono camera. Hopefully, uh, down the road, that's something we'll be able, I'll be able to, to pursue. Uh, but for now, with RGB data, color data, that's, that's my workflow with star color. So there you go. I'll be putting some links in the description with other videos to help you out in your astrophotography journey, as well as some links to some astrophotography gear with OPT and Agena Astro to help get you guys started on the right foot. If you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to put them in the comment section. I'll do my best to answer them. But as always, I appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching and God bless. Till next time, clear skies. Take care.